I hope you all had a nice lunch break. Please sit down because now we continue with, uh, yeah, with our first speaker, Joris van den Bosse, um, on GeoPandas. Okay. Good afternoon. Um, quickly about myself. I'm uh, currently working at INRIA for the Université Paris-Saclay Center for Data Science. My talk is not related to the work that I do there, but I'm yeah, here with their support. Uh, so my talk will be about GeoPandas, and which has a goal to make it easier to work with geospatial data in Python. But before I uh, get to GeoPandas itself, let's look at, uh, let's look at a part of my title, title, the geospatial data. So what is it or why do we need a separate library for that? So yeah, any kind of data that have somehow a connection or to a place on a uh, location on the earth. And due to that special aspect, uh, you want to do some other kind of uh, operations, special operations on those data that you can't do with typical data analysis libraries that we already have in, uh, in the Python ecosystem. So as an introduction to give you a few examples, for example, many governmental data on statistics, on population density, <laughs> poverty, and things like that, all, all uh, geospatial data. Another example, uh, biodiversity data. Here the picture shows uh, some bird tracking experiments where they specifically tracked uh, a single or a few birds, but also biodiversity observations from volunteers that uh, just record their observations, a uh, typical example of uh, geospatial data. Uh, so it's also an example of volunteered uh, geographic information, which, for example, OpenStreetMap is another example of uh, that generates a lot of geospatial data. Last small example, here it shows the, uh, and, uh, the New York taxi data set where you see, I visualized the drop-off and uh, pick-up locations. So also data with anyhow related to logistics or uh, locations of customers, all geospatial data. Now if you talk about geospatial data, there are two big families of uh, data. So we, on the one hand, left you see an example of raster data typically uh, from, for example, satellite imagery. Um, here you see the heat uh, loss of, of buildings, uh, but it's grid-based, so it are pixels. While on the, hand, on the ha other hand, you have vector data, which is coordinate-based, so you have objects with certain coordinates, and there are relationships between those uh, coordinates. And in my talk, um, I'm going to focus on uh, those vector data. And many of the, um, yeah, Software packages that work with vector data, they work with a common abstraction model to um, model those, uh, the real world with vector data, which is called simple features. It's an open geospatial consortium standard. So you have points, uh, single points, line strings, polygons, or you can have combinations of those multiple ones, uh, one, uh, one vector feature that uh, consists of multiple of those. So that's how and the, the, the objects in the world will be described. Um, and in, uh, often, those data will also be uh, um, attached to attributes. So each feature, each vector feature, has uh, certain attributes that describe that feature or, or holds properties of that feature. And you may already guess, eh, but here, if you have such an attribute table, that's where that will pandas and geopandas will come uh, into the picture. But before going to the Python packages to work with geospatial data. I quickly want to say something about the bigger ecosystem because many of the base Python geospatial packages are actually just built upon a wider ecosystem. And many of those uh, libraries that I will show now are supported by the uh, open source geospatial uh, foundation. One is uh, GDAL. It's uh, a library that, a C library that, yeah, uh, basically can read and write all different kinds of formats for geospatial data with a common yeah, model uh, inside the library, both for raster as for vector data. So it can read and write many different formats, file formats, and it's also used in many uh, different um, um, yeah, libraries of, or software packages. So many of the, for example, desktop GIS uh, GIS applications actually use GDAL for their um, imports and exports. 
Another one which is important for this talk is Geos, which is a C library that implements those simple features that I showed before, those points, line strings, polygons. Uh, so it implements that in C and all the different functions, operations that you could do on such uh, features. It's used, uh, again, under the hood by many applications. Uh, for example, PostGIS, which is the special extension to Post, uh, the PostgreSQL database, is uh, an interface or wrapper uh, to um, Geos. So the Python, uh, the base Python geospatial packages are uh, often uh, interfaces to those libraries. So we have the Python bindings for GDAL. Uh, another one that I didn't mention is Poi4 for, uh, for, for, uh, conversions of uh, projection systems. Um, but the Python bindings to GDAL are not that Pythonic. They are rather uh, close to the C API. So you have some more Pythonic libraries, both uh, started by some uh, Gillies which is raster.io to work with raster data, Fiona for vector data, and then Shapely for which is based on the Geos library. So that's the one I will talk a little bit more. So what does Shapely? Shapely provides a Python, uh, is a Python package which provides those features, those points, line strings, polygons, um, with the under the hood uses Geos for those operations. Very small example, for example, I can create a point, can create a line, I create a polygon by buffering my line, and then you have many operations that you can do on them. For example, uh, I want to check whether my polygon contains the point, and in this case, it's true. So it's a very nice library with one uh, bottleneck, is that in actual data that you have, often you don't have a couple of those points and lines. But often you have a, a bunch of such points and also um, combined with an attribute table. So, and that's where then GeoPandas uh, comes into uh, play to use Shapely but provide this uh, easier interface. So it was started by Kelsey Yordal um, with the goal to make working with uh, geospatial data just like any other data. As you are used to, to work with NumPy, with Pandas, uh, to uh, yeah, enable that to for geospatial data as well. And to do, to be able to do analysis, which which you could also do with uh, desktop GIS applications like Quantum GIS or ArcGIS or with uh, the PostGIS database. So it extends Pandas to make it geometry aware, and it's actually a rather lightweight library um, because it just uh, builds upon all those different uh, packages and libraries that are already uh, mentioned in this talk. Okay, but enough. Uh, Slides that I've shown, let's uh, have a small demo to give you an, a better idea of what, um, what the GeoPandas can do and looks like. So, the first thing, uh, uh, GeoPandas can read and write many uh, different formats by using Fiona with a read file function. And for example, I downloaded some uh, data from Paris about the uh, bicycle uh, bicycle sharing system, which is called Verip, uh, about the availability of bikes. And if I show you, uh, you will see, so it just looks like data frame. You see some different attributes and also uh, point geometries. The second thing that I downloaded are the different quartiers, uh, so the different administrative districts of Paris. Uh, and uh, some data as well. So, what are those objects that you saw? It are geo data frames. Uh, if you look here at the data type, it's a geo data frame. What is a geo data frame? It's just a pandas data frame, but which, ha which has a geometry column, um, which you can always access through the dot geometry attribute. Um, ge geometry column doesn't necessarily need to uh, be called geometry, but um, so, and the, this one, what you see here, that's a geo series, and a geo series is nothing more than a series, but which holds uh, geometry objects, in this case points, um, and enables and adds to the, because it's a subclass of a panda series, it adds all the uh, spatial operations that you would like to do on all those points, adds them to the, uh, to the object. And if you access a single object of those, you can see that are actually the shapely uh, point objects, which were wrappers around the Geos library. 
it's still a data frame. So uh, although hey, it's now a geo data frame, but all the things that you know of pandas, you can still do. Um, for example, I filter here uh, some Boolean filtering. So I only take those stations which are open. And I can, for example, from of the bike stands, uh, make a histogram where you see uh, a distribution of how many uh, bike stands are there at each uh, station of bikes. But it's not just a data frame, so we now have access to many of the spatial operations. For example, of the different quartier, I want to know the area. And those A is available as an attribute. You have many other uh, attributes as well for the different properties of those geometries. Um, yeah, I downloaded, uh, checked a certain point. But for example, I could also, uh, for my stations, um, calculate the distance to a certain point. The point to the, the coordinates are for the Notre Dame in the center of Paris. So I can easily calculate for all my points in my stations, a uh, data frame, the distance to that single uh, point. And then I can, for example, also check uh, which of my quartiers, uh, which of my districts contains this point. Uh, which will give you a, a Boolean series, and with that you can then filter, and you see it's actually the, quart the quartier with the, which is called Notre Dame, which is not surprising, of course. There are many more of those spatial operations. There is there a list. Uh, all the, the common ones are uh, implemented. Another thing you can do with, uh, with GeoPandas is quickly visualize your data. Um, for example, if I just plot the different uh, quartiers, here you see, it's maybe not very visible on that line, on, on the screen there, but all the different polygons. And then there are some options to tweak those figures. For example, I want to give them some, uh, some random different colors, um, or uh, some face colors and edge colors, some alpha. The typical, it's our matplotlib figure, so you can just um, also afterwards adjust them just like a, a matplotlib uh, figure. You can also plot the points. Here, just, of course, a cloud of points. Um, in this case, for the points, it might be nice, for example, that you can uh, also show the streets, uh, streets behind it. So what did I, did I do for the demo? demo? I downloaded using the OSM uh, NX library the, uh, from OpenStreetMap, the, uh, just uh, a shape file of all the streets. Um, and I can. For example, then uh, make a combined plot uh, with now two data frames, one data frame with line strings, and I added there all the different uh, points of my stations. I can also color uh, my plot based on a certain value. For example, here, which are the available bikes, I specify uh, to uh, use the available bikes to color um, I did. My plots, I can also do, for example, legend is true to get a, uh, remove this one, to get uh, a color bar with it. And here you see uh, uh, that closer to the center, there are more available bikes. So all people went with their bikes to the center. And there, there are a lot of bikes available, while in the more uh, uh, further away from of the center, there are less bikes available. The same with, um, the, um, yeah, with the Cartiers, I can also I give them some colors. Something else for, Geo, for of GeoPandas is that it provides some uh, spatial operations, uh, like spatial jumps. So what I here do in this demo is I want to know from, for each station in which Cartier it is uh, it, it's, uh, located. So what I do is a spatial join of my stations with the Cartier, and I say how should it be joined? It should be joined based on whether the station is within the Cartier. So I specify that the operation should be a within operation. Um, and if you now look at this data frame, it's not, uh, with the zooming, not that visible, but you will see that there is now a new column at the end here, which says, which is the name of the uh, Cartier. So I can, uh, for example, count for each um, Cartier, how many stations there are by grouping on the uh, Cartier uh, name, which is the LQ, it's a bit a strange name, but um, and count them. And I add them back to my uh, Cartier data set. So now I have in my uh, Cartier 
I have a number, which is how many bike stations there are in that uh, area. For example, I can now plot uh, my quartiers again, but now with the coloring of the number of bike stations. So it's uh, spatial zones let you easily uh, combine uh, data of different geospatial geospatial uh, data sets. Um, for this case, because it's more uh, informative to know the relative number of bike stations by the area, I calculated that as well. And you see here uh, that in the center there are more bike stations than uh, further away. Um, I will maybe uh, skip the example here, but just to say that GeoPandas can also very easily convert uh, from one coordinate reference system to the other by using PyPro under the hood, uh, using the two, uh, two uh, CRS uh, function. Another example, um, just to show that you can also very easily, uh, for example, uh, plot your data of GeoPandas with volume, which was already mentioned this morning, to have uh, more interactive uh, or web-based uh, uh, plots. Um, so, very quick, maybe a bit too quick, uh, demo of GeoPandas to give you a bit an idea what it does. So, as a summary, hey, you can read and write a lot of formats. You have the familiar manipulation. Hey, it's just a pandas data frame, so all your knowledge there still, you can still use it. Different special operations, uh, predicates, and uh, are element-wise available. You can reproject your data, visualize your data, um, and do more advanced joins and overlays. Of course, there is more than GeoPandas. There are many other libraries that I didn't mention yet that, you, that, are, that use GeoPandas or can be used together. Um, for example, just a few examples. You have GeoPlot, which gives some more high-level uh, visualizations. Cartopy, uh, certainly if you want to, because GeoPandas is not uh, projection aware, it just assumes that it's a certain projection. But if you want to make maps that are aware of that, a Cartopy uh, is very useful then. Folium for interactive uh, plots, or as uh, which I already mentioned, for which you can do a street network analysis and uh, some others. Um, that was a quick introduction to GeoPandas, uh, but to, there is a, a but to this story. The but is that GeoPandas is rather slow, um, which can be uh, a problem if you want to use GeoPandas on some bigger data sets. Um, to give you an idea, for some basic operations, like a within operation, whether my point is within a polygon or the distance uh, to a polygon for a series of 100,000 points, both, are, both those operations take around um, a second, it's a millisecond number, a second to run. It might be, it might not seem that much, but you can of course have a much bigger data set. And also a very basic operation that you often do for many points, you want to, to know the distance to many other points. So it quickly increases uh, those numbers. Um, to have a bit an idea of how good or bad that is, I try to compare it with some postures. Uh, you don't have to look at the code here. It's, you can find the full example in the repo of the, of the slides. Um, and I'm also not a postures expert, but just to have some idea, I implemented two queries in Postgres and did the same, uh, from, uh, the same, to get the same result in GeoPandas, and you see that uh, Postgres is quite a bit uh, faster. Uh, why is GeoPandas so slow? Um, so GeoPandas just stores those points, so those line strings, uh, the geometry objects, as Python objects in arrays. And for all the operations that I've shown, we actually just, uh, so for example, we have a, a geo series a point and I want to calculate for each point the distance to another uh, point. Basically what happens under the hood is just a list, list comprehension through the objects and we call on each individual object uh, the function uh, which then calls into C uh, to do the actual uh, geos implementation of the distance function. So that uh, gives a lot of overhead. Um, luckily there are some recent new developments. It's a collaboration with uh, Matthew Rocklin. It was a bit kind of a pet project for us this summer. 
And what we tried is, uh, what we did, uh, is implementing, for now it's called the Geometry Array, and it's an array like uh, to hold geometry objects. Uh, but instead of storing the, the Python objects, we only store the integer pointers to the geos, uh, the actual C objects. And so if we, for a certain operation, have to iterate through those, through those we can iterate in Cyton and directly call uh, geos uh, from Cyton. So uh, that which um, uh, removes a lot of the overheads. And once you access them, then it's still wrapped in a shapely object and nicely, nice Python class to interact easily with those uh, objects. Um, a second part for that is the geometry block. That's a bit more uh, uh, yeah, related to the internals of pandas. That's to integrate it in, in pandas because, of course, we don't want that pandas thinks it just integers and tries to do mathematics with those uh, pointers. So um, what's the goal of this? Mainly to have better performance. Uh, but some other things, uh, it will also reduce a little bit the memory use. It will give some possibilities for parallelization because this, the loops in Cyton can release the kill. Uh, it would be very interesting to explore a bit whether we can uh, get some, yeah, try this out by using Dask to do some distributed or um, parallelized uh, work with GeoPandas. Um, and for the first aspect, the better performance, to give you an ID. So that were the timings that I showed before, and for the simple uh, operations for some more advanced queries. And with the new uh, refactored version of GeoPandas, uh, these are the results. So for the simple things, it depends a bit on what kind of operation that you do. But for some operations, it's, quite, it's a bit faster or quite a lot faster. And also for the, the more advanced ones, you see now it's a lot faster uh, than uh, before. So that's a uh, yeah, very uh, cool new development, I would say. Um, if you want to try this out, very welcome, because it's yeah, just new code we've written this summer. It can really use some actual test testing with real-world data. So uh, there is a link here to the uh, issue on the tracker, which uh, tracks a bit this development, so you can uh, check out GeoPandas uh, in the specific branch there uh, to test this uh, new version of GeoPandas. If you would be interested in that, you can certainly talk with me during the conference, but also uh, during the sprints, for example, Friday would be a nice opportunity to further work on, on, uh, on this. Okay, so that was my uh, talk. If there are any questions, uh, welcome to ask. A short question, uh, do you think, it, does it also work with kind of 3D data, like calculating some volumes, or would, be, would it be kind of simple to, to extend it to work with kind of a 3D thing, like calculating volumes or something like this? Um, for now, so the, about 3D yeah, uh, data, um, so the, the simple features, they are actually extended to also to have uh, surfaces and 3D uh, surfaces, but as far as I know, uh, it's, I'm not sure, how much the uh, support for those features is in Geos, and certainly not yet in Shapely, but um, well, it just, I, because we depend on Geos, it's only, it just depends on what Geos uh, supports. Mm -hmm. um. Any other questions? Um, excuse me? Excuse me. <coughs> um. Um, Pandas integrates quite well with SQL Alchemy, and there's also a library called GeoAlchemy, which lets you integrate with PostGIS very well. Does Geo, GeoPandas integrate with GeoAlchemy? Um, not, not yet directly with uh, GeoAlchemy. We have a function to read from PostGIS, not yet to write to PostGIS, but actually it would be very easy. So that's, uh, I know there is a, also an open PR, but it, it's not yet now, but it should be easy to add. So okay. it's certainly a nice contribution you could make. Okay. I had a question about the speed up that you were seeing in the Cython branch. Is that just because you moved the arrays and the looping 
to see or are you also using like more clever data structures for doing distances like ball trees or, or something like that? Um, for the, the simple things, the speed up comes from the fact that we don't loop in Python but in Cyton. And also that we, so we don't have the overhead of the, the, that we call the Python object and the Python object calls the C function. So those two aspects uh, are for that. For the spatial join, it's also because we um, use the, the, the tree um, indexing of uh, geos in the, in the spatial join operation, just like uh, PostGIS also does. Okay. Hey, uh, I have a short question, rather application oriented. So one problem I very commonly have with GPS data is I have points, uh, but the accuracy is not so good, meaning that I know that they are on the street, but they don't really necessarily correspond to the street. Do you maybe have any features which make it easy to say, okay, if this point is not on this kind of, uh, of polygon, please give me its closest projection to one of those polygons? Yeah, that's one of the... Um I'm not sure it's already implemented in the new version, but it's the, so the closest point is a typical, uh, it's certainly available in Shapely, for example, a uh, typical operation that uh, between those features uh, is, is available to give the, the closest point from, for example, a point to a, a polygon or a line string. Uh, okay. Do you have an opinion on Folium versus IPy leaflet? Uh, no. <laughs> Which one should I use? I would say try it out. Uh, okay. And the one you choose, you can uh, do a contribution to add it to the example gallery of GeoPandas. Uh. Uh, still one, one last question. Um, not directly. Uh, if you would say have something like that, um, uh, so the the normal group by uh, like pandas works. But uh, if you want to group by certain areas, what I would make and it's very easy to make is just construct actual polygons of them, and then you can do just a spatial join to get uh, in which polygon they are, and then you can do a group by. It's maybe. In a few steps, but that's also easy to do then. 